Okay, we're given the graph of a polynomial function and our goal is to find what actual function produces this graph. So as we get going on this, what we wanna kind of pick out is first the zeros or x-intercepts or roots on this, then their multiplicities and kind of put that together as factors for our function. So as I look at this, it looks to me like we have x-intercepts or zeros at negative three. Looks like we also cross at negative one. And then hopefully we can pick that out over on the right hand side. Looks like four is gonna be another x-intercept going on here. So start with the x-intercepts or zeros or roots, whatever you wanna call them. Next up, let's pick out their multiplicities. So remember, as you're picking out multiplicities, even multiplicities touch, odd multiplicities cross. So on our first one here, as we come down here, we touch and come back the same direction. What that tells us is that has to be an even multiplicity. We tend to go with the smallest numbers possible unless something's directing us a different direction. So I'm gonna go with two, that's a nice even number. Now each of these next ones, they do cross, but notice how they cross slightly differently that this one's much more vertical. So it crosses, so I'm thinking odd multiplicity, but this one is much more like it's hugging close to the x-axis. It's crossing much more horizontally. So in comparing these two, I'm gonna use the smallest multiplicity possible on this. So an odd multiplicity, we're gonna go with one, but because this hugs in closer, I'm gonna go with three, just to indicate that it's gonna cross a little bit closer to the x-axis, more horizontally if I were to draw a tangent line here. All right, so after we have zeros and their multiplicities, let's put this together and create factors for our function. All right, whenever you're doing this, remember that it's always x minus whatever the zero is for a factor. So in creating these, it's going to be x minus a negative three or x plus three, a little bit cleaner. We said multiplicity of two, so I'm going to use that up in the exponent. Okay, negative one was our next zero, so I'm going to use x plus one. That's going to be raised to the first power for its multiplicity. And finally, four, I'm going to go x minus four, and we said that was going to be raised to the third power. So we're almost there. I like these factors, but we haven't quite taken into account that it's going to hit all these points that are on our graph. What we need to do is identify one additional point on our graph and a good place that I tend to like to look is right here at the y-intercept. So looking at this y-intercept, I believe we can make that into an ordered pair that between negative 80 and negative 160 is going to be negative 120. So that's going to be zero left or right down 120. So that's what it's going to look like as an ordered pair. So we have an x value and we have an f of x value. Now to account for that, um, there could be some sort of scalar multiple out here, meaning that um, we're, we could have you know, some constant, uh, a number out here that could be a stretch or a compression. To identify that, I'm just gonna put like an A as kind of a dummy variable for the time being, and we're gonna solve for A in just a second. So let's plug in that ordered pair, the y-intercept that I picked out. So zero for our x's, negative 120 is gonna go on the left-hand side for f of x. So negative 120 equals a times zero plus three quantity squared times zero plus one to the first power, zero minus four to the third power. All right, now we have an equation with only this one unknown. We don't know what a is, but everything else is numbers. So let's do some solving for a. So negative 120, I'm just bringing down, equals a times, hopefully we can visualize this. This is zero plus three is three squared will be nine. The next factor is just gonna be a one, right? Zero plus one. I could write a one here, but I'm not going to. And then finally, zero minus four, negative four to the third power is gonna be negative 64. So maybe a, just another step or two, we have a multiplied by nine times negative 64 makes negative 576 a, and to get A all by itself, we'll divide both sides by negative 576. And with a little bit of reducing down, we can make this into a positive 5 24 Okay, so now we have a value for A. What we wanna do is take this back up to our original and plug it in for that A. So our final answer here, we can say F of X 
is going to be our value for a, 5 24ths, multiplied by x plus 3 squared times x plus 1 to the first power times x minus 4 to the third power. And there we have our polynomial function uh, in factored form that would produce this graph over here on the left hand side. I hope this helps out. I know these can be a little bit challenging, but just take it one step at a time and make sure you pick out that additional point, plug it in, solve for A.